are we talking about this morning? Ah, so you're going to talk about such a common topic, alcohol. Alcohol this morning. All right, alcohol. So, well, I can see my drinking in Miami. Go ahead. <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen here. So let's take a look. Because this was published on the 25th of July, 2024. It says, new study debunks the health benefits of moderate alcohol consumption. Right? New study debunks that. Because I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure many people have heard things like drinking a glass of wine have some health benefits and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right uh, the reality is it doesn't it doesn't it actually doesn't there's actually no health benefits to the consumption of any amount of alcohol there is no safe amount of alcohol anyone can consume all right in fact just to, to mention what this year is based about because of, of time constraint we can't go into all of the information as they would say here in the second paragraph over the years, many studies have suggested that moderate drinkers enjoy longer lives with lower risks of heart disease and other chronic ills than abstainers do. That spurred the widespread belief that alcohol in, moderate, in moderation can be a health tonic. However, not all studies have painted such a rosy picture and a new analysis shed light on why. What really happened was, in those studies, what they did, they were looking at or comparing alcoholic drinkers with those that are abstainers and moderate drinkers, right? But the how they did it was some of the studies used as abstainers people who stop drinking due to developing health issues, right? Right. Which are, and they use a lot of elderly people. So they use elderly people as abstainers who developed health issues from drinking and other health issues. And then they use them as abstainers or people who are uh, just stopped drinking recently, stopped drinking, and they use them as part of the study. So, of course, when you compare them to a moderate drinker, it obviously looks like moderate drinkers have some health benefits and, and, and are living longer lives. Right. If they had used true abstainers, like people that have never drank, or people below a particular age group, when they looked at studies that did that, there was absolutely nothing showing that moderate drinkers were healthier or lived a longer life. And then something else I want to bring our attention to is something from back in, that was discovered back in 2012. Red wine researcher, Dr. Deepak K. Das published fake data, right? So this was after a three-year investigation because they were based off of a, a tip that they got, an anonymous tip that they got about this particular uh, scientist that worked at um, uh, a particular university in the U.S. and is known for his research in the benefits of wine and, and whatnot. And... Um, Based on that, when they did some research um, investigation, after three years, they concluded that he fabricated a lot of the science. Wow. He fabricated a lot of it, over 100, and, well, he had been involved in over 150 different research papers, right? Ooh. And this is why I try to educate people with regards to when it comes to research and understanding studies and understanding the hierarchy of studies because his research was in epidemiological studies. That's fall, that falls under observational studies, which observational studies cannot be conclusive. You could only draw correlations, right? Uh, observational studies does not show cause. So right. it can't show that this causes this disease. Of course, the general public don't know this. So they just see, hey, this study say so and so, so and so, and people would grab at studies that apply to their confirmation bias. Now, when I say confirmation bias, understand what I mean is because they want to believe something. She would look for anything, anything that, that points in that direction. Yeah. And when you have a confirmation bias, your defenses, your defense wall is down because you want to accept this as willingly as possible. So you're not going to look close. You're not going to ask certain questions. You're not going to double check or even fact check stuff. Right. You would accept it because it appeals to you. 
So when it comes to alcohol, people would still see, because I'm pretty sure if I look at the Facebook comments now, you're going and see some people commenting, I'm going and still thing, and I need my punching, and whatnot, whatnot, yeah, yeah, whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a problem, because I know, uh, people, I am sure you have heard the saying, you can't trust a man that doesn't drink. I don't know if you have ever heard that. Yeah, a man, a man who drinks to tell you will tell you the truth. Right. And that is a form of reverse psychology. Right? Uh -huh. Because how is somebody choosing not to poison themselves, somebody you can't trust? In reality, what they are actually saying is, I cannot manipulate a sober man. That is what they are actually saying. Okay. Right? Because if you are sober, if you are someone that in the you view outside, like I mean, whether it's business people or whatnot, and you choose not to drink and you can hold out in choosing not to drink and not fall for the peer pressure of those that are around you that are drinkers, then you are not somebody that is easily manipulated. Mm. Okay, that is what taken. they truly fear. Point that is taken. what they truly fear. Right? So, you know, listening to the program, and people are, you know, mentioned stuff with the government and, and which government to bring in because we have this two-party system. We don't need to change either the two parties or no. You know what need to change? The people. The people is the people that needs to hold the government accountable, but we don't have people holding the government Seth. accountable. Therefore, they will do whatever they want to do. Ricky, right? Ricky, Ricky must be sitting home applauding you this morning. Ricky is calling every morning and say the same thing. It's the people. Mm -hmm. Stefan is the people. Yeah. If we start to hold them accountable, it doesn't matter what their characters are. Okay, yeah. for example, let's take the US when you know people would say that, that Trump is racist and, and whatnot, whatnot. But when people held him accountable, he did a lot of stuff for the black community because they're watching him like a hawk. So he, he now have to go against even his own nature and do stuff for the people to benefit the people because he need to be reelected because they're holding him accountable. Right. But we don't hold anybody accountable. Because no, no, we, 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 we give them a free pass and then we expect, we expect that they're going to put in work in order to, 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 to improve your life. Because when times get hard, you know what we do? Uh -huh. We go and we take a drink, right? We well, go yeah, and we take yeah, a drink yeah. and because we use any drink to drown our sorrows, we're not going and focus on solutions because we're not sober enough. Yeah. Right? Now, if you're not drinking, you're going to start to focus on solutions, mm. right? Because you're not going to use the alcohol as a scapegoat for addressing the problem that is directly in front of you. Alcohol has no health benefits whatsoever. None whatsoever. If I could only enjoy myself with alcohol, it means I am a coward when I'm sober. You know, right? Yeah, no, serious. A, a lot of men... Or a lot of people on the whole is get brave and turn into to, to brave heart um, after a few but drinks. Only when eh? drink. Yeah, only when but, they drink. Yeah, but yeah, but 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 the other thing is, you know, in the terms of marketing, um, I remember in Miami self, we mm. were at the Juve boy, I think it was the Juve morning, and I was talking to, um, to a couple a couple guys up there. there from Trinidad, and we were talking about black and white. Mm -hmm. Oh, black and white scotch whiskey? Yeah. Uh, it's black and white scotch? Right. And we were talking about the ad that it had some years ago with the mm -hmm. woman in the bathtub. You can't okay, remember okay. that? You remember that? No, I remember that one. I will send you that ad. <laughs> Listen, that was the most played ad. Listen, that was at that time in that era, that is mm -hmm. the closest thing you're going to get to porn on TV. Is that ad to sell, the, to sell the, um, the, 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 the black and white? I'll and never forget that ad. And we were talking about that this year today. Right. Yeah, they use, they use these things. Adver advertisement is, is a very interesting thing. Um, now, when I was studying counseling, right? Yeah. You know, with, with Sigmund Freud, the father of psychology his nephew was actually hired by advertising companies and he revolutionized advertising. Okay. Before a long time, an ad like for a vehicle used to talk about the specs of a vehicle. Mm -hmm. To go from zero to 60 and whatever time. And 
yeah. this and that engine. When he was hired, he started to focus on, imagine how it feels like driving down the road with the wind blowing through your hair and whatnot. So he started to put on this emotional appeal to it, right? And show, you know, a woman in the car and, and, and stuff like that. Nobody's studying specs again. They're studying, oh, this is the kind of lifestyle yeah, I, I yeah, want yeah. to have. And that's how they change up marketing, use a lot of psychology into marketing. Yeah. And people fall for it. And many of these things are detrimental to health. There are many products I have seen advertised in Trinidad and Tobago as health products, right? For your children to excel in sports and whatnot, Stefan. I know the science of these things. That ain't that going on reduce the IQ, that going on cause muscle loss, all kind of things. But people don't know. Right. They don't know. And people believe that all advertising is true. I'm not saying some aren't. All right. But many many doesn't rely on facts are just statements made remember um television radio stations advertising businesses these are companies that have to keep afloat their job is not to fact check right the job is not to fact check you pay for advertising they publish your ad it's up to you the consumer to do your fact checking to do your research but right. people don't so um, we see that, hey, alcohol make me feel nice so therefore and the ad say it's I, good. I, mean, okay, some, I have had I have had some nights some. I have had some nights eh, um, where it has it, it it didn't make me feel too nice, sir. Real I go buy it up and I tell it you. Um, and 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 look, <laughs> I have had some nights, friends. I do a lot. Of, I used to drink plenty of rum. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was younger. Real rum boy. That's what we used to drink. Rum and coke. Now I can like for me, I know other people like to drink, but for me, nah. I can't I can't I, I don't like the taste state again. It just like mm -hmm. I don't know, my palate do it nah. Then if I break down the science of alcohol and the yeah. metabolic process of alcohol for you. Yeah. And that is one of the most dangerous things that you can consume. You know? All right. right. It is officially have been officially classed as a poison. It is a poison, mm. right? I remember I did a segment last year because on the fourth of January last year it was officially classed as a poison. Okay. Right? There's enough research behind alcohol because of, of the fact that it is legal. It has been heavily studied, heavily studied for decades. This is why people had to fabricate certain things in science, but of course, uh, like I, I mentioned, that article was published um, in 2012 where that guy was found to fa fabricate it. It was a three-year investigation because in 2010, a year, um, uh, a law was passed stating that um, all studies must now show their finances and list all conflicts of interest. Right. Because in the past, before 2010, a lot of large corporations used to bribe scientists Okay. Used to bribe scientists to manipulate data in order to get their products sold on the market. What? A lot of people today that hold on to certain beliefs with regards to things in nutrition and that would come and tell me, oh, they say this and they say that, are holding on to old science that have been manipulated through corruption that have been corrected. But the corrections are not advertise in a big way because it's not in the best interest of large corporations yeah. pharmaceuticals and medical device industry uh, as i mentioned medical device industry that is way more corrupt than the pharmaceutical industry but that's a, a topic, that's for, a another topic time. for another day right all for right another time well right? yeah so set we gotta we gotta wrap up but um i hear in you i got your point and um of course it's been a pleasure as usual it's nice having you back Oh, it's nice being back. It's nice being, being back. back. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I line, boy. You know, I come back and... Oh, gosh, boy. It's like I went, you know, you went from... And I Miami's said, you know, the top of the nice program, you know. To visit. I went Miami's from... a nice place. Yeah, I went from 100 straight down to zero. I feel like when I come back home, boy. Miami is like a, um, what I'll say is like a retiree country, depending on the part you go. When For I retire, you know what yeah. I mean? I'm not saying it's for old people. You know, it's a place for, to relax and and chill. Because a lot of a lot a lot of people that kind of nice vibe. A lot of people a lot of people leave and and head to Florida for retirement. Eh? 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people it's mm -hmm. it's 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 just it's just that kind of state now. But it was it was it, it was really, really nice. Um it, it was a great experience, man. I I gotta say. Mm -hmm. And and people I think people need to wake up to the realities of 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 where we are in terms of development and things like that. Um even even some of the medical um, and the hospitals and stuff over there. I mean, it's yeah. shock and cheese. I had a, I had a, I had a little view or, or at least a little example of one um, that, that would put our hospitals, you know, in a dustbin. So, yeah. I mean, look, even when you go but to... Our country, mm -hmm. our country and the Caribbean suffer from a problem called, called a brain drain, which yeah. is you can be educated in the Caribbean. And this was done deliberately by the colonizers, huh? You can be educated in the Caribbean, but they ensure that it don't have jobs for the educated. So they fly out. Yeah. So the people that could grow up to become better politicians and stuff and develop the country, they fly out and end up living outside because of that brain drain effect, which was deliberate. It has been done to the African continent as well. Same, same yeah. thing. You can be educated in the country, but you can't get no yeah, work there no because work. they don't want you staying there. They fly you have out. to go back to the colonizer's country and you help build their country, their country while and you you're still... suffer. And we are yeah. left with, with, like the politicians we have now, <laughs> doing whatever they're doing. Right and messing things up, but but that's the reality of it. So a lot of people have to make a conscious decision to stay in the country, fight up with certain things, which is not an easy decision to make. Yeah. In order to better the country. Right? All right. Well, I tell you what. Um. Thanks a lot, Seth. And um. Thanks for having me. We will fight again next week. Yes. So next week.